Our CBS News poll also found that crime and gun policy were among the top issues for voters in 2024. On Friday, we toured the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms here in Washington. Although violent crime is down across the country, ATF Director Stephen Dettelbach says the agency is trying to do more to reduce gun violence. I think it's fair to say that for the agency that is the only federal law enforcement agency that solely deals with violent crime, mm -hmm. if you're really concerned about violent crime in the United States, this agency is way, way, way too small. 5,000 people. 5,000 people total, 2,500 agents. Let me give you a, a sort of a baseline. In one city, New York City, there are 36,000 police officers, right? Uh, 17 times the entire ATF agent corps for the entire country. I mean, if there's no such thing as public safety on the cheap, you know, we have to support the police and we have to support the federal agents that are out there risking their lives every day. Is there a way to use what you have now in a sharper way, in a more targeted yeah. way? We have to do that, right? That's the name of the question that I have every day. What do you need? If we don't get any more resources, uh, mm -hmm. the president's asked for more, if we don't, what we are doing to try and sharpen, we use what's called crime gun intelligence, uh, which is uh, a fancy term, but basically it applies to being able to follow the gun. So a crime gun, which is something that's involved with the crime, and squeeze every last bit of evidence and intel we can out of the thing that comes out the front of the gun, mm -hmm. the bullet, the cartridge casing that's ejected out the back of the gun, the outside of the gun, things like the serial number, and the inside of the gun, the markings inside of the gun. The ATF is prohibited by law from creating a centralized database of registered gun owners. How big of an impediment is that to actually stopping gun traffickers? This happened in Highland Park uh, in the July 4th massacre, mm -hmm. right? F firearm, serial numbers put in. We run an urgent trace and get back to the police in just a matter of hours, the identity of the person who purchased that firearm, they catch the person before they kill again, okay? How does that really happen in real life? The way it doesn't happen is we punch in a person's name and up comes, oh, they own so many guns. Congress right. has prohibited us from doing that. We pay somebody to take out search function in order to comply with the congressional notion that there can't be a gun registry, the law that there can't be a gun registry in the United States. It's not a notion, it's a law, mm -hmm. and we comply with it. That, that means that we have to work within that system. Last week, the Supreme Court heard arguments over bump stocks, devices that effectively turn semi-automatic rifles into machine guns. And the question of whether a Trump administration ban was lawfully implemented by the ATF. This debate that we heard is about more than bump stocks. Mm -hmm. It's about these, 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 all these different products which are being used to turn semi-automatic weapons yes. into machine guns. And if you had asked most police chiefs or most agents who are running towards this gunfire, it's a very dangerous situation for them too. Uh, whether 10 years ago they thought this was even a possibility, 15 mm -hmm. years ago, they'd have said no. Machine guns went the way of Al Capone and the Tommy gun. Unfortunately, technology can be used for good and technology can be used for bad. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what I want people to understand is we at ATF are doing everything we can within the law to try and uh, protect them under the laws we have from these unlawful machine guns. Now, if somebody wants to pass additional laws, mm -hmm. we'll take those. For a lot of people at home, they are horrified when it comes to their own children. Whatever their view on guns are, they want their kids to be safe. How do Americans protect their children against gun violence in this environment? Well, I'm a parent, we were talking about that, and I've raised uh, two children, uh, and uh, I think about this too. I think the temperature on this issue mm -hmm. is way, way, way too high. Uh, and, it, it, and I understand why it is, because as you say, this is our kids, right? The leading cause of death of children in the United States is firearms violence, right? Not cancer, not cars, guns. This is kids and teenagers. On the other hand, people have very passionate feelings about their Second Amendment rights, mm -hmm. right? I sat in a room in Lewiston, Maine last week uh, with uh, families and survivors of the, the mass shooting that happened in Lewiston a couple months ago. And there were people in that room, first of all, tremendous grief, unspeakable uh, frustration and anger. There were people in that room who had really different views on these sort of policy questions, 
Mm -hmm. right? Everything from how can somebody get a weapon like this in this country uh, to, uh, to, you know, but I really value my weapons in the same room. Weeks after they've lost a brother or a father or been shot themselves, right? Those people were able to sit in that room with all that grief and have a discussion. If those people in that grief can disagree with each other but still sit and have a conversation in a civilized way, what is the excuse for the other 350 million of us not to be able to do that? We owe it to those people to try to get what we can agree on done.